<laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, and freeloaders. You know who you are. <laughs> For those who haven't yet had the pleasure, I'm from Mike. I'm from London. Anyone else from London? <laughs> For the rest of you, that's the most strangers from London have ever spoken to one another. <laughs> uh, did you all enjoy the New Zealand lamb? Lydia actually chose that sheep herself the last time she went to New Zealand. <laughs> to one of Barry's ex-girlfriends. <laughs> um, but seriously, there comes a time in um, there comes a time in everyone's life when they um, they meet their true one love, their soulmate, the person they know they're going to spend the rest of their life with, and they're going to love unconditionally. And for Barry, that moment came. 20 years ago when our eyes met across a crowded dance floor. <laughs> and uh, Barry did stand out at the time of the dance floor. He, um, at the time his dress sense was a sort of fusion of um, Stevie Wonder and Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> With a haircut that would, uh, would even shame Donald Trump. <laughs> but of course none of that matters anymore because Lydia buys all Barry's clothes and she dresses him. And what a fine job she's done today. Don't you all agree, girls? <laughs> and on the subject of a fine job, what an amazing venue. What a fine job you've done, Lydia. It's truly amazing. To think it's only been a year since Lydia told Barry they were getting married and she's managed to pull all this off. Um, and on that subject, I'd like to dispel the vicious rumour that was going around last night that um, Lydia gave Barry an ultimatum that they had this weekend to get married, otherwise that was it. That's I spoke to Lydia in confidence last night, it's completely untrue. She was prepared to give him at least another two weeks. Um, when my wife and I first met Lydia, we were invited around her house to watch a, watch a black and white film. And we thought, okay, interracial porn, not really our thing, but, you know, we'll give it a go. And um, anyway, it turned out it was actually a vintage black and white film. And, um, you know, at that time we realised, oh, right, they're into the whole vintage thing. Oh, okay, that's cool, that's cool. <laughs> so I thought today it'd be completely inappropriate to use technology and the internet to figure out, take a lead for the speech. So instead I, I bought a couple of books, and the first one I'll be referring to is Speeches for All Occasions 1932. Okay? <laughs> So I will be referring to this book. <laughs> Starting at page 14. It's important for the best man to emphasise the social standing of the groom and reference to his membership of exclusive clubs, profession and generosity should feature early on in the speech. <laughs> okay, clubs. Barry is a member of the RAC <laughs> and, he's got a, and he's also a member of Groupon. He's got a Starbucks loyalty card, I don't think that quite counts, but anyway, he's got that. Uh, profession, um, Barry's worked in IT, which I think is which is why he's so very, very interesting. Um, he doesn't all been plain sailing for Barry. When he first started working in IT, the first day they brought him a shiny new Apple Mac, and all he had to do on his first day was come up with a password for eight characters, and it took him all day. Eight characters, can anybody think of that password? Eight characters? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Yeah. Oh, oh, come on, keep up. Uh, anyway, Barry, Barry's truly found his Snow White today. And Lydia, you've truly found your, um, um, sooty, sweepy, snooty, whatever his name is. Um, uh, generosity, that's the thing I need to mention. Um, you know, a lot of people think Barry's actually quite careful. Um, with money in some circles, which I think is incredibly unfair, because when Barry came to London, he had just £20 in his pocket, and having recklessly bought a, a round of drinks at Bucharest the other day, he's now only got £2.27 of it left. <laughs> you know, that's not a man who's careful with money. <laughs> uh, the book also say, says I should uh, recognise the, uh, the parents, so I'd certainly like to congratulate uh, Lydia's parents, Mike and Joy, for bringing up such a wonderful, wonderful daughter, I'm sure you'd all agree. <laughs> And well done to Barry's parents, Ruth and Colin, for, you know, doing the best you could. <laughs> just, 
one small criticism. I mean, where did the name Barry come from? I mean, have you any idea how embarrassing it's for people in this room after to introduce Barry to their other friends? Page 19. If one is struggling for some humorous anecdote, one can always exaggerate an amusing exploit in either yachting, rowing, billiards, fishing, croquet, cricket, or ballooning. Well, Barry doesn't know any of those, so I thought I'd talk about the stag weekend. Okay, so there we were. We all got invited to Romania, which we all know is the CD. European, Eastern European capital of, of, of Eastern Europe. So we all got there. We all got to the hotel. We're all sitting in the foyer. Embarrassed I've organised a surprise for you. But I need 20 euros off you each. 20 euros. <laughs> I wasn't going to say this, actually, in front of Lydia. But as soon as you put us in the student quarters down the road, I'm going to tell the story. <laughs> Couldn't stay in the hotel, apparently. And um, so we're all sitting there. Anyway, paid out 20 euros. Anyway, the Romanian arrived. Embarrasses, we only got four hours. We're only here for 24 hours. Let's get stuck in. Okay, okay. Anyway, they arrived. They looked at us all sitting down and thought, Anyway, so they rang their friends. Their friend came, who we didn't even have to pay for. Okay, so there's eight guys, 20 euros each. Four hours, I've got to say, it was the most tiring afternoon of my life. And even some of the young guys who are not here today, they couldn't keep up, couldn't keep up. Four hours, four hours. Everyone's getting very embarrassed, Barry. So, um, I'd just like to thank you, Barry, on behalf of everyone to the Snag Weekend, for the four-hour guided cultural tour of Bucharest. <laughs> On a personal note, I'd like to thank you for the two-hour tour of the non-air-conditioned People's Palace. I mean, who goes back from a stag weekend having a comprehensive knowledge of the Ottoman Empire and the Bronze Age? Okay, it's not only appropriate to reflect on the early days of the courtship, it's essential to give your audience an understanding of the newlyweds' humble beginnings. Now, I can't speak for Lydia, but I can say Barry was certainly looking for a long-term relationship. You know, someone had to spend the night and actually be there in the morning. <laughs> and also someone who didn't have to deflate on the day the cleaner was coming around. <laughs> Which, incidentally, Lydia, I do apologise now for poking with a fork when I first met you, but hopefully now you understand. Seriously. Don't these guys look amazing today? Yes. I, only, I only hope I look that good when I retire. <laughs> these days, newlyweds have a familiarity with pleasures long since considered the preserve of well-established marital relations. Nevertheless, one should always give the audience the impression that such intimacy has been absent and therefore good character suggests you should tantalise the audience with the impending anticipation of the wedding night. Okay, well I think we all know this is going. So, um, I just want to say that um, intimate relations between two people is a beautiful thing and should be cherished. It's just that between five, it's amazing. <laughs> And uh, the only other advice I want to give you is your, your relationships. You're probably still in the coffee days. You know coffee days when Barry's rich, warm and keeps you up all night? Yeah? Things will evolve like your holidays. Twice a year, too short. And Barry will want to go somewhere which you didn't enjoy and refuse to go again. Uh, but don't get me wrong, when you've been together as long as my wife and I, um, you know, being in bed together can still be a beautiful thing. Only the other evening we're both reading books and we both finished the books at exactly the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage is a long-term union, and although the newlyweds will have made vows to one another earlier in the day, the best man's speech should offer some guidance to help prosper the foundations for a joyous and secure life together. Which brings me neatly onto my next book. But there's more. Now, we know Lydia loves all things 1920s, and Barry loves all things 1950s, so I thought the Housewives book 1935 would offer some useful 
advice. Uh, girls, if you do have the opportunity to, uh, to have a pen to hand, I'd suggest get the pen <laughs> and a uh, piece of paper. Some great snippets here, <laughs> which I really laughed at the other evening reading it. Um, where is it? Home laundry work. To boil or not to boil? <laughs> Certainly a conundrum in our household, and the other one I really like, because it's so appropriate. Damping, folding, and mangling. <clears throat> For those that don't know, Lydia still mangles. Okay, right. Duties of a housewife. Okay, this is definitely serious, duties of a housewife. And I'm, I'm editing some of it, because it just goes on. But here we go. Girls, pen ready. When retiring to the bedroom, prepare yourself a bed as promptly as possible. Whilst feminine hygiene is of the utmost importance, your tired husband does not want to queue for the bathroom as he would have to do for his train. <laughs> but remember to look your best when going to bed. Try to achieve a look that is welcoming without being obvious. <laughs> if you need to apply face cream or hair rollers, wait until he's asleep as this can become shocking to a man lasting at night. When it comes to the possibility of intimate relations with your husband, it is important to remember your marriage vows, and in particular your commitment to obey him. <laughs> if he feels that he needs to sleep immediately, then so be it. In all things, be led by your husband's wishes, do not pressure him in any way to stimulate intimacy. <laughs> Should your husband suggest Congress, then agree humbly, all the while being mindful that a man's satisfaction is more important than a woman's. I underline that bit, by the way. Where are you sleeping tonight? When he reaches his moment of fulfilment, a small moan from yourself <laughs> is encouraging to him and quite sufficient to indicate any enjoyment that you may have had. <laughs> I'm not, it's all in the book, you can borrow it. <clears throat> Should your husband suggest any of the more unusual practices, be obedient and uncomplaining, but register any reluctance by remaining silent. <laughs> it is likely that your husband will then fall promptly asleep, so adjust your clothing, freshen up, and restore your nighttime face and hair care products. <laughs> it's the last sentence I particularly like, because this definitely kept, kept my wife and I together for so long. You may then set the alarm so you can arrive shortly before him in the morning. This will enable you to have his morning cup of tea ready when he awakes. <laughs> and how we all appreciate that, girls. I mean, how things have changed. But uh, not in this household. I mean, Barry likes to think he wears the trousers, but we all know Lydia wears the trousers in this household. In fact, when Barry started dating Lydia, his Facebook status changed from single to under new management. <laughs> uh, but seriously, Barry's a truly nice guy and a, and a, and a great friend. Um, but he does have one flaw, which I'll share with you. Um, the inability to make a decision. And those are now closely know exactly what I'm talking about. Look, two best men couldn't make his mind, but no, they're both called Mike, so that's close enough, okay? He's not even wearing a suit today, he's wearing a jacket and trousers from two suits, because he couldn't make his mind up which suit to wear, okay? And the other thing is, in the entire time I've known Barry, 20 years, he's never owned a television. It's not because he doesn't want a television, he just couldn't quite make his mind up which television he wanted. So Lydia, you've managed to achieve to get Barry to choose a bride before he's been able to commit to a TV. So congratulations to you. And I just wanted to say I think he's chosen extremely well. So can I ask you all to raise your glasses for a toast? Here's to love, laughter and happily ever after. The new Mr and Mrs Blackledge.